president of enterprise applications with extensive experience implementing, managing, and consulting with customers that use ERP applications to manage and improve their business. Now, before we get into the meat of today's material, I want to provide a quick plug for ourselves. OSI is a 24-year-old global professional services firm with about 1,400 employees, and we are an Oracle Platinum partner. We work with a variety of technologies, Today, you are hearing from our Oracle Applications Group focused on Oracle Cloud Applications and EBS solutions. So real quickly, I want to mention a few uh, house, housekeeping items, and, uh, and uh, then we'll get into our agenda. Um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, uh, please type them into the Q&A or the question and answer area. Um, typically, it's on the right-hand side of the WebEx screen. Um, but as, uh, as we're covering a variety of, of uh, topics here, uh, be sure to type those questions in, and we will be answering them. Uh, we're going to attempt to get to all of them at the end of the, uh, of the WebEx. So uh, let me pass our webinar over to our subject matter expert, Dibby. Dibby, are you there? Yeah, thanks, Doug. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining once again. Uh, a quick overview of the session of the session today. We just want to start off with uh, just the objective of the session, what we hope to achieve, and then we'll go through what is planning Cloud Central at a very high level, and then of course we want to talk about differences between EBS value chain planning and uh, planning central. So we'll start with a high level overview of that, and then get into a little more detail on the supply planning side, demand planning side. And then uh, a couple of points on implementing Planning Central with EBS, uh, running in conjunction with EBS. So as you can all see, it's a pretty large topic. Uh, here's an overview of our audience. This is what I think the audience that we are talking to. Currently, I'm guessing most of you, or if not all of you, use EBS. You use the supply chain execution for sure, which is what we know as order management, purchasing inventory, work in process. You ha are already using ASCP and or Demantra. Um, ASCP mostly and sometimes Demantra as well or for your forecast, so you could be doing your forecast on Excel. And you have either considered replacing ASCP or Demantra with Planning Central or are looking at adding Planning Central uh, using it, uh, you go implementing Planning Central instead of implementing ASCP and Demantra, with Oracle yapping at your heels to implement a cloud solution. Here's an objective of the session. Uh, all of us, a small cartoon there to help me explain my point of view. Uh, what we are trying to do is enhance your perspective. Everyone has talked about, you know, heard about cloud application, Oracle talks about them all the while, and people have different ideas around what the cloud application is based on who in Oracle or who from the uh, user community has been talking to them. And what we want to do is sort of give you a holistic view of what that module that we are talking about really is. So what this definitely is not is uh, it's not a sales pitch. So we are not trying to sell you cloud or even tell you that you should go and implement cloud. All we are trying to do is put some facts on the table from our experiences on what is the difference between the on-premise value chain planning and cloud planning. And expounding a little bit more on the elephant theme, uh, as you may have guessed today, we are talking elephants. Uh, just wanted to highlight, here's what we want to do basically, just highlight the differences. So, uh, you know, tell you what it, things are in VCP that are different in the cloud. And we don't want to talk about the application as a whole. Probably the things that are same in both of them, we won't even talk about. For example, we won't tell you that all elephants have four legs and a trunk and a tail, right? But we'll talk about uh, how the foreheads are different or how the ears are larger in one. So just an example there. So coming back to our agenda, what is Planning Central Cloud? So Planning Central, uh, for those of you that um, have not been in it to any of the Oracle presentations or demo, demos, is a part of the, of the whole cloud-based supply chain solution. 
as you know, Oracle has sales, financials, and then they have transportation and other cloud modules out there. And there is a SCM cloud application, the supply chain management cloud applications that includes order management, manufacturing, procurement, uh, product lifecycle management, and planning central forms one of the modules. So it is essentially the module that helps you uh, develop and generate your forecasts and then uh, develop a supply plan that meets the forecast based on your operational uh, transactions and your supply, your current supply and demand. So what Planning Central is, is an integrated demand and supply solution. So it generates demand forecasts on one, one end and then uh, consumes those demands against actual orders. It helps you generate statistical safety stocks and then plan the supply against uh, the demand that you need to, to meet both your forecasts, your sales orders, as well as your safety stock requirements. And then it helps you release the planned orders for execution. So in that sense, talking uh, in context of an EBS uh, value chain planning solution, it is equivalent to Demantra and ASCP together. So if you added put Demantra and ASCP in one box, or for those of you who are slightly older in the Oracle world, the erstwhile Oracle demand planning ODP solution. So if you put in ODP and ASCP in one box, that would be what Planning Central uh, is all about today. The next point I wanted to go through was a very high level overview of uh, EBS value chain planning versus Planning Central. So in the EBS space, you basically had two products. You had Demantra uh, for your demand management. Demantra generated the forecast. It had sales and operation planning, and it had prom trade promotion planning. And then you had ASCP, which managed the supply chain planning uh, side of the solution. It man managed your supplies, came up with, uh, uh, with pro projected supplies that it wanted you to do, planned orders and things like that. And they, there was inventory optimization to help you develop your safety stocks, and there was global order promising. Now, this whole planning solution is now planning central. Now, if you notice, there are a couple of uh, points that I crossed out there. Trade promotion planning is currently not there in planning central, and inventory optimization is not there as a separate module. There are different ways to handle inventory optimization. We can, as we go through, uh, we will go through how we manage safety stocks, et cetera, in Planning Central. But those two modules don't exist. There is forecast generation. There is SNOP processes and workflows in there. And there is supply chain planning and global order pro promising. And all of these modules form part of the Planning Central module. So it is one integrated product that has uh, all these uh, all these modules that were earlier part of Demantra and ASCP in EBS. So in VCP, uh, each application needed to be set up separately. In most places that we have been in, we typically implement ASCP first. Uh, that, that is the one that is more closely integrated and more tightly integrated with EBS and uh, to handle the supply planning. And then Demantra always comes in later to, man to generate and manage forecasts. So both these applications, they are two discrete applications. They are set up separately. The planning dimensions are independent for supply, uh, for demand and supply. So for instance, in Demantra, you set up levels, hierarchies, time buckets, planning horizons, all of that is set up independently, and they don't need to uh, match what you set up for ASCP. ASCP, you set up uh, planning aggregators. You set up your consumption rules, planning fences, your distribution network. All of those are uh, two independent uh, setups on two independent applications. And uh, what, is, what combines them, uh, what links these two applications is the forecast, the forecast that you generate and demand and send across into ASCP. Um, so essentially it is the organizational supply chain planner's job uh, to uh, integrate the two applications in that sense. Make sure that the levels and hierarchies and time buckets that are used in demand translate into an effective forecast that can be used effectively in ASCP. 
Now this is slightly different in Planning Central. In Planning Central, you integrate uh, the supply and demand plan, and both of these plans leverage a common set of planning dimensions. So you set these up. Um, you set up the Planning Central module. You set up your planning dimensions, in the, and you set up your demand plans and your supply plans. And all of these plans can actually use the same set of um, dimensions and hierarchies be it customers, organizations, suppliers, resources, products, and geographies, and even the time dimension and the time buckets are the same. So in that sense, it makes it a more integrated uh, platform, uh, and it's much more easier to integrate your demand plan and your supply plan on Planning Central, in, in my opinion. So here is a typical, uh, very high level typical process flow in value chain planning. You have EBS on one side, which has all of your transactional data, your inventory, BOM, uh, with POs, et cetera. You have data collections that collect your master data and uh, also your transactional data. And on the VCP side, you have Demantra and ASCP and the inventory optimization module. The VCP could either be in the same instance uh, as EBS, uh, typically people start off with ASCP being in the same instance as EBS, and then soon you realize once you outgrow that and you have start having performance problems is when you decide to have a separate instance. And you could have Demantra and ASCP sitting in the same VCP instance um, along with the inventory optimization module. And ASCP then implements recommendations that goes back into EBS. So this is a very high-level process flow in VCP. In Planning Central, uh, it's sort of similar. The process flow follows the same path, more or less. It's just integrated all into one application. So you have a data collections process where you uh, have multiple options for refreshing your current data. We'll talk a little bit more as we go along on, on the data collections. Uh, you have a demand planning um, process to generate the forecast. There is inventory planning that manages your safety stocks and gives you safety stock recommendations that sort of um, fits in with the inventory optimization module on VCP. And then you have your supply planning to come up with your supply plans, and then you move on to a recommendation and you execute and ar archive the plan. So, and all of these are uh, run based on the options and parameters that you set up and the dimensions that you set up in your Planning Central module. So data collections. Uh, this is by f the first step in Planning Central. As you can see, the data elements that are collected um, are pretty similar to the ones that are, uh, that are in from EBS VCP. Uh, you have your ma master data. Obviously, all the planning engines are pretty similar in both. So the master data and the transactional data needed by them are pretty much the same. In addition, you have the order, ma order history and the sales orders and shipment data needed for, to generate your forecasts. Uh, planning Central collects all of this data automatically from the Oracle SCM cloud applications. Uh, it also allows you to collect the data from external systems through flat files. So if you are implementing it with uh, EBS, for instance, you could uh, collect all of the data, extract the data from EBS on flat files, and then uh, import them on, into Planning Central as from an external system. Uh, it will be like an external system integration. And that integration is out of the box. Being able to import it through flat files is out of the box functionality. And from our experience, pretty much all the master data elements and the transactional data elements can come in through flat files as of release 13. Um, release 13, which is the latest, absolute latest release that Oracle's rolling out right now on Fusion, uh, is the one where uh, all of the data elements finally are available to be collected through flat files. Till the till release 12, we couldn't, we didn't have order management data through flat files, but now they have allowed that as well in release 13. The next step would be the demand planning. Uh, the whole purpose of demand planning is to accurately predict demands with statistical forecasting. 
So an equivalence to, as I keep saying, the equivalence to VCP would be Demandra or Oracle Demand Planning for those who implemented ODP. Uh, it forecasts standard products, it can forecast configure to order products, and uh, it can detect outliers, process net changes to the demand, and predict demand for new items. So you have new item role in processes. And uh, you can also compare statistical forecast to sales forecast. So pretty much everything that you expect a forecasting module to do, uh, it does. Um, I have a few slides separately on demand planning, so I won't get into demand planning in detail uh, in this overview side section. Um, but we can we can talk about some of the differences over there. Uh, the next step after demand planning is the inventory planning. Now this is where it actually looks at your various forecast accuracy measures and uh, the customer service levels that you want to achieve and comes up with a target inventory that you want to hold both at the uh, finished goods level as well as uh, ideally at the finished goods level, but if you wanted to um, also calculate it for the component level, it could do that as well. So it helps you calculate the safety stock and allows you to make manual overrides as needed to the safety stock. So this inventory planning module, as I said, is equivalent to uh, the inventory optimization module in ESCP. Inventory optimization did a little more in my mind than what this, what this does, but I think for most intents and purposes, this does a pretty good job of using statistical calculations on the safety stock. Uh, step four would be supply planning. Now this is where you balance your supply and demand and recommend the new supplies as needed. So it does everything that the ASCP, uh, by and large, that the ASCP module in VCP used to do, the ASCP supply planning module would do. It recommends reschedules and cancellations. Uh, it can identify and resolve material shortages by bringing in more supply or um, asking you to creating planned orders that would, it would ask you to confirm. It can identify resource overloads and supplier capacity overloads. Uh, the one thing that I think it does better than ASCP is contract manufacturing. Uh, it handles contract manufacturers. It allows you to define contract manufacturers and uh, allows better management of those, including supplier capacity, for instance. Uh, keep in mind, uh, you know, that this application, Planning Central, uh, was uh, developed around the time when contract manufacturing is a much bigger uh, component of the manufacturing process than it was 20 years ago when ASCP was designed. So contract manufacturing definitely is better served in the planning central uh, suite of products in my opinion. And the final step is execution. Uh, this again is similar to the way ASCP works with EBS. So if you are using Planning Cloud Central with uh, the cloud SCM products, it actually will automatically release and reschedule the sales orders and planned orders depending on the various release fences that have been set up. It can manually release groups of orders when desired or manage changes and calculations. It can also manage back-to-back -back and dropship orders. Now keep in mind all of this automatic release um, will happen uh, only if you are using Cloud SCM. If you are using this in conjunction with EBS, as we have uh, worked in a couple of places with, you will actually need to take those recommendations across manually through an interface, uh, import them into the EBS uh, interface tables, and actually get it to release the PORX or make the PO changes to the PO recommend recommended changes to the POs as needed, or release the web jobs as needed. Uh, through an interface that you would need to manually write and populate into the EBS side. There's also a lot of analysis and reporting, and in my mind, this is where um, Planning Central shines uh, compared to ASCP. For those of you who have used ASCP and who support ASCP in their day-to-day lives, um, I think you would agree with me that one of our biggest bugbears with that product is uh, the reporting. You know, how uh, the, or the lack thereof. You know, the fact that there are no, uh, there is very little uh, out-of-the-box reporting on ASCP and very 
few ways in which you can access the data and uh, uh, tweak it or tune it to make it appear the way you would like. Now, Planning Central has a lot of um, inbuilt reporting. There are a lot of measures. Uh, you can see the list of measures as on the screen here that are predefined measures that you can actually measure your um, plan against. And you can pull in all of those uh, into views as you need them and uh, allow and show you the plan from, from different perspectives. So there could be a financial perspective of looking at the plan, there could be an operational perspective, there could be a, a supply, uh, you know, like a manufacturing planner's perspective, there could be a buyer's perspective, and there are all of these measures. There are over 200 predefined measures for different planning purposes. And some, something equivalent to this sort of would be the KPIs that came in with ASCP uh, on the VCP side, but I think it's a very poor substitute. KPIs were, we were very few KPIs available, and I never in my years of implementing ASCP have never seen anyone using those KPIs out of the box um, and really putting them to good use. So Planning Central basically has a number of ways in which reporting can be done. There is uh, OTBI, uh, just like you have in the other cloud modules, there is inbuilt Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence. And OTBI-based reporting has been made uh, and it has been enabled with Planning Central as of release 13. There are info tiles, which are customizable info tiles, again, available across all of the modules, all of the cloud modules and Planning Central has those info tiles too. Uh, all the screens are exportable, uh, so the material plan or the horizontal plan as you call it is, uh, as you know it, on the ACP side. That is exportable to, uh, in Planning Central to very easily to an Excel, that and many of the other screens. Uh, I know many of the um, EBS screens are exportable to Excel too, but these are much, much more flexible and uh, handle data much better uh, in terms of being able to export them to Excel. And the one thing that you can do is you can make changes back on the changes on Excel and upload these changes back into the screen, which is something that's not available in EBS. Um, so you can do all kinds of reviews. You can review dem demand, inventory, supply, resource, all of that. You can report that plan versus goals, and this it's all graphical. So reporting is, again, as I keep saying, is one area where I think uh, Planning Central excels. It's just an example of info tiles. Those of you who already use Fusion applications would have seen this in other applications, so I won't go into a lot of detail on this. But all of these predefined measures as well as customizable info tiles are available on Planning Central. One another point at a at a general level is data security. Uh, again, this is one area where uh, we have a lot of constraints on in ASCP. The every time I implement ASCP, I keep coming across these questions on, oh, I don't want my buyers, I don't want all my buyers looking at all of the parts. They want to be, they should be able to see only parts that they are assigned to or uh, they should only be able to work with suppliers that they are assigned to, or customers, uh, you know, demand planners should only be able to work with customers that they are assigned to. Now, those sorts of things were almost virtually impossible to do on um, you know, uh, on ASCP and on Demantra. Well, Demantra, you could still do it to a certain extent, but ASCP was virtually impossible unless you did a lot of customization, which was never, never recommended for ASCP. Now that data security piece, I think, is uh, something that has really uh, been well implemented in Planning Central. So you can restrict uh, visibility of supplier and demand plans to authorized users at a plan level, and even within a plan, you can do security. And like a couple of examples are um, based on enterprise structures, so based on business unit or orgs, which is pretty intuitive but also based on uh, item like categories, for instance, or products, which I think is very helpful. So all, you know, you can define job roles. Um, this is, uh, follows the standard data security job role uh, definition that is followed in Fusion. 
and these job roles can then be assigned uh, and uh, at an item level at an organization level so you can you can secure a job role to be only looking at certain items or certain categories of items or certain inventory orgs uh, business units legal entities so at an organization level it's pretty flexible you can get someone to look at only a certain customer class for instance if you have a planner that works or demand planner or a forecaster that only works with a class of retail customers you can have a customer class and have them work only those forecasts and you can uh, also get your buyers only to work with certain suppliers so you can define all of these um, uh, the data security at all of these entities and then apply filters to decide on visibility. So data security is pretty comprehensive and pretty flexible. It does mean that uh, while implementing, you have to make sure that these are set up right. You could always leave it at default where everything is open to everyone, just like in the good old ASCP days. But you have the ability to limit these as well. And I think that as you mature in your implementation, you can keep improving your security structures to implement that. Um, a point here to me, um, you know, among all of these ways in which planning uh, data, planning central handles data security, the only thing that VCB would do was, was by inventory org. That was the only way you could control um, access in the previous instances. And anyone looking at an org could pretty much look at any item in the org. Now that has now become a lot more refined and filtered uh, in planning central. So going into a little more specifics on the, the supply planning side. A little bit of humor here. <laughs> inventory turns. Obviously, the goal of supply planning is to include in, increase inventory turns. No, not everyone has this bright idea. Um, but uh, everyone wants to in, you know, reduce shortages and increase inventory turns. So few things that um, are off the bat that I just want to make clear that are not available as of release 13. And I've mentioned uh, very clearly as of release 13 because Oracle keeps coming up with these new releases and with cloud, they will keep adding to the new releases. The uh, history with Planning Central is ever since it was released, which was more or less release 11, um, every release that has been a big chunk of additional functionality. So what I'm saying uh, for release 13 may get totally disproved in release 14. But as of release 13, there is no constraint planning. I don't know how many of you on this call actually uh, use constraint planning. Um, most places that I have implemented use unconstrained for sure on the ASCP side. And there are a few that use constraint planning with mixed results. But the planning central has no constraint planning as of now. It's all unconstrained. There is no distribution planning model. So there is no distribution plan as such. So you cannot create a distribution plan. You can only create a demand plan and a supply plan. Um, so uh, distribution planning can maybe, there is there are ways to do it using sourcing rules and uh, indirectly, but there is no separate distribution plan available. There is no SNO for those who used strategic network optimization. That's not available. You can uh, develop shipping networks and uh, sourcing networks using the sourcing rules, but there is no SNO module. And there is no separate inventory optimization module. As I said, that comes in as part of calculating safety stocks using different parameters. Uh, apart from these things, most other supply planning functionality is similar to VCP. Um, I'll go through a, a few highlights in my subsequent slides, but you can take it that almost anything else that you're using on ASCP, be it planning fences, um, lead times, the way lead times are handled, um, uh, compression on the you know exceptions, compression on the recommendation, lead time compression on recommendation, all such things that you typically use in ASCP are available in Planning Central. So the first thing you do is you define a supply plan. So you define, when you define a supply plan, you define the scope of the plan, just like you do in ASCP. You define the organizations that are part of the plan. 
and you define plan horizon, uh, what are the exception sets if you have any, and uh, what are the measures that you want to use in the plan. You also, if you are using safety stock and an automatic calculation of safety stock, you also enables the safety stock planning parameters. And uh, you can run the safety stock calculations as needed to populate the safety stock quantity. So uh, here again, the safety stock um, can be a separate run, uh, unlike in ASCP where safety stocks can be calculated as part of the ASCP run. There is no way to run safety stocks separately unless you are either using inventory optimization or uh, you have uh, or you are using safety stocks from the inventory module. In the planning module, typically in ASCP, there is no way to run a safety stock plan separately which is something you can do here on, uh, uh, in Planning Central. And then you configure the unconstrained supply planning options. This is what the supply plan screen looks like. I want, this is just an example, uh, you know, just to give you an idea. It's a, in, in reality, this is part of the screen. There are a lot more options, but if you, those of you who have seen the ACP planning screen, this will look familiar. It asks you if you want to use demand time fence, planning time fence, uh, what is your assignment set, whether you want to override the firm planned orders. You know, these are very typical uh, ASCP type screen. It almost looks like whoever designed this looked at the ASCP header, plan header screen and came up with this screen. There is the forecast spreading. Even the positioning of the various fields looks familiar to me coming from an ASCP world. Um, since safety stock um, seems to be such a such a big deal in most companies that I work with, in most organizations that I work with, thought I'd just uh, spend a couple minutes talking about safety stocks. So, uh, Planning Central actually uses statistical uh, safety stock calculations. You can tell it to not plan safety stock if needed, or uh, uh, in which case it won't consider the safety stock levels, or if it is using safety stock. Uh, planning, then you can uh, you can set up the safety stock planning method, and then there are different ways to plan it. You can use days of cover. Um, if, for example, you want to keep three weeks of uh, demand in in stock, and so you could use uh, days of cover there. You can say uh, that it's a non-MRP planned uh, safety stock. Then it uses the item organization attribute. Uh, whatever is defined on the item master, which typically if you use this with EBS, you would set this up in EBS and use that. And uh, you can apply safety stock change to uh, change interval, you know, if you want to use smoothing or, uh, and if you want to use safety stock smoothing, then all of the smoothing parameters that you use to smooth the safety stock to avoid jerkiness in your, uh, in your safety stock demand. So uh, it, I won't get into more details on how it calculates, but it basically uses the statistical safety stock formula with the standard deviation and the forecast, from the forecast accuracy and the customer service level that you want to achieve to basically create uh, the safety, calculate the safety stock amounts. Now, once you define a supply plan, you then run the supply plan. When you run it, you can define whether you want to perform forecast consumption and spreading or not. So this is a, a runtime option. You don't have to define every, it at the plan header. So you could have the same plan and you can run it once uh, while consuming forecast and once without consuming forecast. You can also run the plan in a memory, uh, just in, a, uh, in an interactive mode, in which case the plan is, is loaded and run in memory. Now, this in-memory planning came out in one of the, in the later versions of ASCP, and you, you allowed you, I think, in first release uh, 12.3 onwards, where you have in-memory planning runs in ASCP as well. Uh, and we always had mixed results using that. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure on how it works on the planning central side. It does have the functionality, and we have tried it out for smaller plans, and it runs well. I don't know how, how well it will perform when you have, uh, you know, 500,000 items or a million items being processed in the plan. But it does uh, allow you to run simulation plans that can run quicker. And then once you have run the plan in memory, you can then decide to save it to the database and uh, enable it to be released. 
And the third mode that where you run it is in batch, which is the normal mode of where uh, the run plan is run, uh, like in standard ASCP plans, where everything is saved into the uh, into the system. And you can use it to then do your uh, recommendations and actions. Now, we all know that the way in which planners interact with the plan is the workbench. So the planning workbench is pretty much um, uh, the, the face of the plan. So how good the planning engine is, uh, is typically determined most of the time by how good the planning workbench is, because that's the way the planners view it and look at the planning results. Uh, for those of you who came into ASCP from MRP, I think you would agree with me that one of the biggest uh, wins of ASCP over MRP, at least wherever, wherever I have uh, had that conversation, has been ASCP's work planning. Sorry, has been ASCP's planning workbench. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the planning workbench um, in ASCP had right-click functionality. It had context context-sensitive uh, menus, all of those things which were not available in MRP. And it had um, uh, configurable exception conditions, uh, configurable exception handling, uh, even config uh, configured the queries by user and things like that, all of which people really loved and they used a lot. Uh, in, in addition to that, of course, there was always complaints. There always will be complaints on things that uh, the workbench did not do. And in my mind, what Planning Central has done is it's taken everything that works well on the ACP workbench and then added a lot of functionality on top as well. So there are multiple layouts, for instance, on the Planning Central. There are graphical layouts, uh, table layouts. You can create your own tables and views and uh, pull in elements as you need in the different tables and views. You can make the screens as dense and information rich as you need specific to planners' needs. So every planner can make their own screen virtually from the planning workbench. And you can um, have different page layouts. Each planner can have multiple page layouts to look at the same data from different angles and uh, have all of them you know, displayed as a tab, just like you have different tabs in Excel. Here you could have the same data displayed in different tabs and you can switch between different page layouts very easily. So all of this, I think, makes the ACP, I mean, the Planning Central Workbench a winner. I think they did a good job in developing this planning workbench. So just to give you a feel for it, um, if you see this, this looks very similar to an ACP planner's workbench. Uh, it's got a configurable header pane and a configurable detail pane. And you can configure all or any columns. Now that would be similar to folder views, for example, on the on the ACP screens. But you can also it goes a lot beyond that. You can almost, uh, to some extent, write different joins. To you don't need to write any code, but you can all, almost ask what what put in whatever columns you think you need in a table view, and create a planner workbench out of it for your own purposes. So I think this is one area where it's really done well. Uh, the other thing is editing supplies and demands. Now, as we know as we work in the planner workbench, we want planners to be able to make changes to the recommendation. And the one thing that um, works very well with Planning Central is the desktop integration uh, with uh, to edit orders with Excel. With Excel. You can pretty much download anything that shows up on the planning workbench to Excel. You can make changes, so you can make mass changes. You can write a query, let it pull up a set of planned orders to Excel, pull those ex down into, uh, I mean, so pull up uh, the planned orders on a worksheet uh, on, a, on your workbench, export those to Excel, make the changes globally on Excel, and then uh, upload those back with those changes. The other thing that it allows you to do, which was not very well handled in ASCP, is it allows you to make notes against supply or demand. So if you, for example, go and firm a planned order, you can then go in and uh, add a note against that firm order. That then allows you to uh, refer that note when you come back to that plan back again. 
So overall, just the way you edit supplies and demands and the way you handle the workbench is a lot more refined and better in Planning Central. Uh, what comes out of the box is a material plan. Uh, now this is just an example. Uh, you could you can customize this as you need. So this is a time phased uh, view of the material demand and supply. So this is very very similar to horizontal plan. Those of you uh, from the ACP world, you would recognize the screen. Um, the one thing I found when I was using this over uh, ACP was that we could pull up a horizontal plan or a material plan as it's called in Planning Central for multiple items in one go. And then that could be exported to Excel. Now I remember in one place we had to actually write a query and a report. We had to develop a report separately for them to be able to pull the horizontal plan for multiple items that fit a query and that fit a criteria in one shot. Whereas on Planning Central it's just available as an export to Excel. So this is one example uh, why I you know keep talking about um, why the the UI and the reporting is much better in Planning Central. Exceptions exception management is another area that I just wanted to highlight uh, coming out of the plan. Uh, most uh, uh, most planners and buyers you know process the plan based on exceptions. And one of the biggest complaints on exceptions is that uh, they are um, there's too many of them. I mean, typically you look go to the ASCP workbench in any organization and open up the ASCP plan, and there are like thousands of exceptions, and people don't want to deal with those exceptions because there are just too many of them. Now, uh, in Planning Central, the exception generation follows pretty much the same process. You define exception sets. You define conditions which would uh, create exceptions, and then uh, when once you la launch the plan, it views uh, you it generates the exceptions, and you can view those exceptions and resolve them. Uh, the one difference is uh, the exception handling in my mind is more refined than in VCP. The exception conditions are configurable, so you can set your thresholds up the way you want them. Uh, that actually reduces the number of uh, exceptions that can be. Uh, that are shown up that makes the whole thing more sensible. You know, for example, if you if you want to set up an exception that anything that is going to be delayed by less than 10%, any delivery that's going to be delayed by less than uh, by less than three days should not show up as an exception. That will not show up. Or anything that's going to be a shortage uh, quantity of less than 10% should not show up as an exception. So those kinds of thresholds can be set up and they are configurable and they can actually manage the amount of exceptions showing up. The other thing that you can do is you can have a plan um, ignore a certain set of exceptions and only uh, operate, uh, only report certain exceptions that you have defined for that plan. So you can run a plan specific to uh, just generating and viewing a set of exceptions that you want the, uh, the planner to, to look at and process. This, I think, uh, according to me, is a very powerful feature because you can almost have a specific exception-specific plan that only looks at certain items and certain exceptions, and you are sure that the planner is focused on fixing those exceptions. So here's an example of what I was talking about, exception thresholds. You can actually configure exception thresholds for demand planning, for supply planning, and you can reduce the number of exceptions reported using these thresholds. Uh, the other thing on the exception handling is that you can combine it with the graphical capabilities. So for in this example over here, uh, it shows you the cumulative number of exceptions and the cumulative number of actions that are uh, recorded against those exceptions. So you can pull up at-risk at uh, exceptions, so they are typically things that need to you need to take action on. And if you see this circle here, this is where the lowest number of actions are handling the most number of exceptions. And you can then click on that, sorry. You can then click on that and let it point you to all of the exceptions that are related to, all of the actions that are related to those exceptions. And you can go in and act on only those. So in in all, I think this whole um, workbench and the way the reporting is done 
and the way exception handling is done leads to higher planner productivity. The backend planning engine, you know, as you all know, those of you I've been doing MRP systems for the last, you know, 30 years, if not more. And the backend planning engine remains the same. It's, as I keep saying, it's, it's always arithmetic. It's nothing else. And uh, this, uh, it's the reporting and the management of the exceptions that make a difference. And I think this is where Planning Central excels. Going into demand planning, uh, demand planning, of course, we always battle with whether it's an art or a science, uh, seasonal, non-seasonal. So I had a small cartoon out there. We've all been there, the problems with demand planning. On the demand planning side, uh, you define hierarchies, levels. You define, when you defi define a demand plan, you then tell it what hierarchy and levels to use, what members are part. So you can run a demand plan for specific members in the plan and specific uh, levels, so you use the hierarchies and levels and members to pick what you want to run. Uh, basically, you, uh, you have a forecast flow, you have you load your historical data. Now, this is very similar to demand run, so I'll just breeze through this um, really quickly. You ha your historical demand is analyzed for patterns. I There is no uh, official documentation on how many um, algorithms this uses, but I think there are 14 as opposed to 27 in Demantra. Not that it really matters. And there are some Bayesian combination algorithms that it will use. Uh, how good these uh, these forecasts are, are still to be seen. It's a new product, uh, so we have not done any comparison between forecasts generated between by Demantra and by ASCP, but as we do, or by Planning Central. But as we do a few more implementations, we'll have that data. And then you generate your resulting forecast, which is the basis for your supply planning and safety stuff calculations. You just like Demantra, you can have multiple user, uh, users uh, can review the statistical forecast. You can use the same data security mechanisms I talked about. Users can approve the forecast. Um, so there is an approval workflow process that you can put in. And then you can use the resulting forecast uh, for use in your supply planning. Um, this does a good job of pulling out forecast exceptions. Um, you can specify thresholds when MAP exceeds the third specific threshold. It can report that. It can report where the uh, demand history has varies from a certain threshold that you can set up. And you can, it also identifies cases with major variation between sales and shipment forecasts. Uh, simulation planning, I just have a couple slides here. This can be used both on the demand and supply side. So once you have a plan, and you can have a demand and supply plan also, by the way. You can have one plan in which you run the demand forecast and the supply. And uh, you can use any plan to run a simulation. So you can add demands, you can cancel demands, you can reschedule demands, add planned orders, and then you can rerun the plan. And uh, you can run the plan with do not refresh with current data. So that way it's a simulation plan. Uh, there's a lot of what-if processing that allows that is allowed in the planning cloud, uh, which is way superior to the ones done in ASCP. So a few points uh, after this on planning cloud and EBS, I'll hand it over to Doug. Okay. All right. Thank you, Divi. Um, so Divi covered a, a, a variety of things there. And our Q&A session is going to be coming up here shortly. We just have uh, two more slides, and then we're going to jump right into that. So in review, uh, Cloud Planning Central can replace EBS, BCP with no need for major process changes. But keep in mind that the EBS data needs to be extracted to a flat file using custom programs. And I believe there are a few questions around this, and we will be getting to those. Uh, once you have that out, then you can run collections in Planning Central to pick up the data files, and then you can run auto box collections. Now, keep in mind that any reporting uh, may need to be redeveloped on Planning Central Cloud. And with any move from on-premise to the cloud, we highly recommend an assessment so you and your team understand the timelines, costs, risks, and changes in process personnel will have to follow to make that move to the cloud. Now, OSI developed a cloud assessment service. During this assessment, we provide a full report on the feasibility risks involved and any changes required and uh, visibility in those gaps. 
Uh, it's detailed and specific. You also rece receive strategy advice on phases, integrations, and any business process change. We're known for handling these projects quickly for a fast turnaround. So if you have any interest in the discussion around what you heard today, feel free to contact us uh, through the contact information on screen, and that involves the uh, email, phone call, uh, what have you. And just a reminder that we are going to have the next webinar on October 26th, on October 26th uh, and we're going to be sending out an email announcing uh, the specific cloud modules. We have a few in mind, but uh, we, we've still yet to pick a topic there. So uh, let's get started on our question and answer session, and we've had a few come through. So uh, our first question, Dibby, came from uh, Kayser, and Kayser was wondering if EBS and Planning Central will communicate through flat files. Uh, they want to know if uh, if there isn't something tighter or a more efficient connection. Can you comment uh, on that? Uh, EBS, that is correct. EBS and Planning Central will connect, will communicate through flat files. There are essentially two points of communication. Uh, planning Central needs to collect all the EBS transactional data, and that comes in through uh, a flat file collection. And then EBS, uh, Planning Central has to send back recommended recommendations back to EBS to process those recommendations. That too will have to be through uh, and upload into the EBS uh, transaction tables, interface tables. Okay. All right. Thanks, Divi. And once again, just a reminder, if any questions, um, if anybody hears something that they're uh, curious about, feel free to ask away. We're going to see uh, how many questions we can get to here in the next couple of minutes. Um, so our next question, and it's a, it's a couple, uh, came from Harish, and during the analysis and reporting section, he was curious um, uh, how that will help Greenfield implementations as they require historical, or as it requires historical data to arrive at, uh, at plan recommendations. And most fusion implementations tend to be customers who are trying to get onto an ERP platform with minimal interruption of service. So how would you recommend this to them? Well, for Greenfield implementations, they would need order history to come in to generate forecasts. And we can collect orders. Order history data can be collected through uh, the flat file collections process. So we would create uh, the data in, flat, in CSV files and import them into Planning Central as history with the required ship dates and book dates and quantities, and then use those to generate the forecast. OK, all right, great. Um, so part two, and there's a part three to this, um, is that Sales Cloud does not integrate with either Planning Central or OM, and a prospect in Sales Cloud cannot be converted to a customer in OM or AR. So what value addition is, uh, is this bringing over uh, from EBS R12? So the sales cloud, yeah, you're correct. The sales cloud is not integrated to EBS, nor is the sales cloud directly integrated to uh, to Planning Central. So we would, if we wanted the customers to come across from sales cloud, I mean, typically the, if they are using EBS, the customers should come across through EBS. But if they are just using sales cloud and you want customers and forecasts to come across from sales cloud into Planning Central, we would have to write an interface. Uh, to build that, to bring it across into Planning Central. Okay. And then um, part three was that uh, planned POs are not considered in, in Planning Central. Why is that? Um, plan, so Planning Central will consider any purchase orders that have been imported from, uh, that have come through the collection. So when you have a PO that has been placed on a supplier, as long as it is in your transactional system, either as a PO or a purchase rec, you can import them into Planning Central and collect them, and they will be treated as planned supply. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so then uh, our another, another question came from Evan, and a few other people are interested in the answer for this. Um, what is the purpose of running a safety stock plan by itself? So you would like to do that uh, just if you wanted to be able to uh, up, look at the safety stock recommendations and then update those safety stocks that they came in. If you just wanted to uh, see what supply you need just to keep uh, fill up on your safety stock levels, 
So it's typically uh, the planned orders that get generated when you run in a, a plan with safety stocks and uh, other demands and everything in there, uh, you would it would generate a bunch of planned orders to satisfy all those demands and safety stock replenishment would be one of the demands. If you just wanted to look at what you want to what you need to buy to just replenish your safety stocks, that is what you would uh, then run. Okay. Um, we had another question come in from Arun. Uh, does the flat file collection support net change? Uh, yes, it does support net change. So we can, uh, uh, when you run the flat file collection, when you run collections, if you specify it's a net change collection, collection and the data is in flat file format, it will pick it up and only apply changes, uh, only apply it as changes. Okay. Um, and then uh, Vigas was curious, um, how long does it take to implement uh, Planning Central? What's, what, is, what does that uh, typically look like? That's a pretty loaded question. It depends on the scope of uh, how, uh, of what you are, are you replacing ASCP? For instance, if you were replacing ASCP, uh, there's a lot less training and change management involved because a lot of this is pretty similar to ASCP. So I would say, you know, anywhere between uh, four to three to between three to five months. Now, if it was a greenfield planning implementation where you don't have any planning at all, it may be uh, even longer depending on how many items you had. So I would say, uh, being if, if I'm pushed to give an answer on this, I would say on an average five months. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so it looks like we're getting to the top of the hour. Uh, we want to keep this timely. So um, if there are any unanswered questions, uh, we will be following up with you. Um, so once again, thank you for taking the time to attend and join us and learn a little bit uh, about the, the, the cloud modules that are coming out. Once again, we're going to have another uh, session uh, the last Thursday of October as we have them each month. And uh, marketing will be sending out an email blast uh, uh, letting you all know the next topic. So once again, thanks for attending, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Thank you.